Hey, everybody, thanks for staying up really, really, really late with us tonight. <laughs> Welcome to week two of the Beehive Blitz. We've already seen some great performances for some of the best football teams in the state. Yeah, Timview started the year with that impressive win over yep. Sky Ridge. Another tough test at home tonight against Lone Peak. Uh, the Knights pitched a shutout last week, but they get it going on the ground. Samuel Wright, right up the gut, goes 26 yards for the first down, keeps the drive alive. Later, quarterback Keepa Niamatolu finds Owen McNeil. Nice out pattern on third down. Another first down. Knights end up getting a field goal out of it by a Breck and Carr, and they take the early lead. Back come the T-Birds. Isa Nalier, he's going to rumble in from four yards out. Tim Few takes the lead, but this may be the play of the week. Lone Peak lining up for a field goal. It's a fake. They pitch it to the kicker. Breck and Carr, and he goes 38 yards for the touchdown. Sweet. What a call. Final score. 31-24, Knights win. How about Breck and Carr? A field goal, three extra points, and a touchdown. He's the man. Another great matchup between 5A and 6A teams as Orem hosts American Fork. And what a game this was. Just 30 seconds left in the half. Orem punting it away. Will Miney fills it. Somehow stays on his feet. And it's bye-bye Miney. He takes this thing 90 yards to the house for a touchdown with just four seconds left before the half. American Fork goes up 20 to six. Back come the Tigers in the third quarter. Quarterback Caden Kahala over the middle to Kui Akana. What a connection these two have been this season. 53 yards for the touchdown. Orem right back in this thing. The Tigers get it back and it's Kawa to Akana again. This time a nine yard scoring strike. Orem cuts the lead to just one point, and the Tigers don't let up. Final, they win at 32-26. Valetti Iangi has three touchdowns for the Tigers. Bountiful high trying to get off to a 2-0 start. The Red Hawks hosting Farmington tonight. First play of the game for the Red Hawks. Quarterback Emerson Guileman rolls out deep to Brock McSwain. That's a 39-yard touchdown just like that. It's 7-0 Red Hawks. They get it back. And with the wind, Landon Zayas drills a 50-yard field goal with plenty to spare. 10-0 Bountiful. Second quarter, Farmington gets on the board with a 52-yard field goal. What a day for the kickers, huh? Jackson Benyon. It's 10 to three just before the half. The snap goes way over the punter's head. Uh-oh. He tries to kick it, but gets absolutely drilled. Oh. Blake Rawson pounces on it for the Phoenix. And then with 30 seconds left in the half, Will Peterson connects with Kava Fia. Fia, 27-yard touchdown. That ties the game up, but Bountiful holds on in the second half. The final score, 17-12. Siaki Fekitoa scores the game-winning touchdown for the Red Hawks. Roy Hyde stepping up in class to battle 6A Fremont tonight at home. And the Royals came ready to play. Quarterback Drew Gardner with a swing pass to Zay Morris. He picks up a nice little chunk before finally getting knocked out of bounds. A few plays later, they give the ball to Logan Sella, and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Roy in front. They would add to that lead. Logan Sella again puts his head down, pushes past the goal line, his second touchdown of the game. And then in the second quarter, Gardner back to pass. He's going to lob this thing up for Colby Fuxer. Seven-yard scoring pass, and the Royals get the win at home against Fremont. Final 50 to 16. Robert Young with three touchdowns for the Royals. From the Fremont Silver Wolves to the Riverton Silver Wolves, taking on Ridgeline tonight. The Riverhawks, a 4A team, stepping up in class. How about JT White? He's all class. Look at him go 30 yards to the house. He's got the JT White stuff. It's Ridgeline on top. Back comes Riverton. This is just a beauty of a hookup. Quarterback Bennett Nielsen up top to Dane Slack. He's picking up the slack in a big way. 52-yard touchdown. Silver Wolves right back in this thing. But Ridgeline retakes the lead. Quarterback Nate Dahl to Hunter Knighton. He's going to bully his way into the end zone for the go-ahead touchdown for the River Hawks. This one goes to overtime. Final 28-21. Hunter Knighton with two TD catches, including the game winner in OT for the River Hawks. Nice. Beaumont on the road. Vikings taking on Granger. It was so windy that the sign didn't make it. Uh -oh. The wind ripped up before the players could run through it. <laughs> That's terrible. Vikings get on the board first. Titan Longson finds Dredge Jensen all alone on the far sideline. Touchdown, 6-0. Granger tied it with a short pick six, but then the Vikings went back in front. The give to Ryan Tillman. He gets to the sideline, cuts it back. 
35 yards on the touchdown scamper. The Lancers come right back, though. They hand it off to Sanui Fifita. He gets hit at the line, breaks a couple more tackles, gets to the outside, gets a block. See ya. See ya. Fifita, he goes 80 yards for the touchdown. Just a great run there. But before the half, you run scores again. Launching to the air. Cole Ingram is there, makes the grab, and then outraces everyone. 64-yard touchdown pass. Viewmont goes on to win it. Final score, 33-18. Kingston Mickens had 180 yards receiving and two touchdowns for the 2-0 Vikings. All right, let's bring in the third member of our BI Blitz team, Jordan Tracy. <laughs> Just a little fired up to go up north. Today. I'm ready, friends. Go. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I went up north, calling myself king of the north now. I went up to Syracuse where the Titans had a really tough battle with the Brighton Bengals, who were poised to be 5A contenders this year. Energy high from the curse. Game day staff telling me it was the biggest crowd they've seen in an opener in 40 plus years. How about that? And the Titans feeding the fans early. First play of the game, Xander Garcia gets the pick six and the Titans are up on the top early and Coach Tulane, he's loving it. A fast start. Later in the first, what might be play of the year, Hoyt Pula gets the screen pass. He looks about wrapped up. No, he's not. Looks are deceiving. Pula can't pull him down. Beast mode. Shoves off defenders. 70 yards to the races and the score. And the Titans are up 14-0. They're feeling good. Pula's telling me he's tired. I understand. I was tired watching him. Beginning of the second, Titans trying to convert in fourth, but it's picked off by Jackson Thompson. That seemed to give the Bengals the momentum. They score 14 unanswered in the second. Tie it up, and they complete the comeback. Final score, Brighton winning this one 34-21. Bo LaFleur and Mason Hurdle with two rushing touchdowns each for the Bengals. Next stop, Copper Hills at the home of the Davis Darts, where the mob seem to get the neon memo. Late in the second, Davis up 35-8, and guys, they pile on. Traden Bessinger finds Bodie Sparrow over the middle, and he is in for the score, and uh, they're loving the neon there in the mob. We're Darts open. driving open. again with about a minute left in the half. Bessinger screen to Jackson, Utsai Ihao, and he'll make some moves in space. Sets up Davis inside the Copper Hills 10. Now, penalties would push them back. Wouldn't matter though. Bessinger to Tyson Badgett. He'd scamper into the end zone to put the darts up 49 to 8 at the half. Bessinger with seven touchdowns through the air on the night. Final score of this one, a whopping 56 to 15. And trading Bessinger again, seven touchdowns on the day. Six of those in the first half. So another fun week in the books, fellas. So we had a lot of fun. I'll send it back to you. Let's do it again. Same time, same sure, place. I guess. Say, Jordan, hey, Go. We are just getting started here on week two of the Blitz. Indeed we are. Coming up, West High takes on a California powerhouse. We'll show you what happened when we come back.